Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on filling water containers. If you find this useful, please remember to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to check out the free resources linked in the video description. Let's get started. This worksheet is also linked in the video description so you can go there and download it and print it out and have a go yourself before you watch the rest of this video. Now, let's start by looking at this example here. So, my tap gives out water at a constant rate. That's always going to be the case for a question like this. I decide to fill the following container from my tap. You can see there's a rather nifty but puzzling container here with a handle and a space that's going to be filled up with water. Obviously, this is a 2D representation, like a cutout of the container. We can assume that it's rounded in a consistent fashion of some kind. I record how the height of the water in my container changes over time. And here we have this graph with time across the bottom. So as you go further from left to right along here, you're moving forwards in time. So here we're at zero seconds, and perhaps here we're at 30 seconds, and here we're at a minute, for example. Who knows? And here we've got the height of water in the container going up this direction here. Now as water pours into the container, it starts by filling this fairly narrow space down here. And if you try pouring water into something very narrow, like a test tube or something, it fills it up zoop, really, really quickly. Whereas if you've got something really wide, like a bathtub, it takes a long time to fill up. So as the water starts going in, it's filling quickly. But as the container gets wider, the same amount of water has to spread out over a greater surface area and so it takes longer to rise in height up the container. So it starts out gaining height quickly, but as that part of the container fills, the rate slows, which is why as time passes, we can see that the height increases less quickly, which is why we got this curve here. Then the water reaches this part here, and this part is consistent in its width all the way up. So as long as the water's coming in at a consistent rate, the container is going to fill at a steady speed. So as the time increases, the height increases steadily. It doesn't increase more slowly or more rapidly. Then the water reaches this bit here. And this bit is much narrower, so suddenly the water is whoop, going to shoot up to fill it to the top. But again, this bit has straight sides. So it's going to be a consistent rate of fill, but much faster. In other words, it gains a lot of height in very little time. And if you keep on filling after that point, it's all going to overflow and flood everywhere, but it's filling the same level in the container. So if we were going to carry on this graph, then I guess it would be like this. The height of water in the container would stay the same, pretty much. So that's how this works. You're looking for periods when the rate of fill is changing, and that's going to be a curve of some kind and you're looking for periods where the rate of fill is steady, and that's going to give a straight line. And if that doesn't quite make sense to you, just pause, rewind this video, and rewatch that explanation until you see what's going on. And perhaps if you've got some containers that you can fill with water to experiment with this, you should get the idea. Now let's move on to a question where you have to do some of this for yourself. Here you have to sketch a graph for each container to show how the height of water in the container would be likely to change over time. So as we pour the water into this part of the container here, it's going to fill at a steady rate because the width or diameter of the container doesn't change. So it's going to be nice and steady. It has to start at naught naught because when no time has passed, no height of water has been gained. So we start there and we fill with a nice straight line. That's as straight as I can get it here. And then what happens here? As we fill this bit, it starts off instantaneously at the same rate, but as it gets wider and wider, the water's going to head towards the top more slowly. So we start off at the same rate, but then we get, oops, it's not quite the same. I've tilted that up a bit, let's do that again. So we start off at the same rate, but then it gets a bit slower, but still going up until it gets to the top when hopefully we stop pouring. So there are two parts to this. There's the consistent gain in height there, which matches this part of the container. And then there's the downward curve here, which matches this part of the container. As we fill towards the top and the container gets wider, so the same rate of water coming in gains height more and more slowly. 
Now, one thing to bear in mind is that you mustn't, as I accidentally started doing, have a curve like this, because this would mean that at this point here, the rate of fill suddenly increases. Let's move on to the next one. So here we've got some kind of rather interesting ziggurat-like container. And we can see that there are three sections, each of which has a consistent width or diameter. One, two, three. So each of these is going to need a straight line. And we can see that the bottom one is going to fill comparatively slowly, the middle section a little faster, and then the top section really quickly, because it's much, much, much narrower. So we're going to have a line that's relatively flat for a slow increase, because as the time increases, the height only increases slightly. Then there's going to be a slightly faster one. And then there's going to be a very fast one where the height increases really quickly in a short period of time. But also the top part here is very small. So that's only going to be a relatively small part of our graph. So we start off with this down here. So that's the slow increase for the bottom section. Then we have a faster increase for the middle section. And then we rather quickly fill up the top part there. It's as simple as that. Now we're doing it the other way around. So here we've got a graph and we have in the same way to sketch a container that might produce this result. We can see that there are two parts to this graph. There's a gentle upward curve there and a gentle downward curve here. Now if we go back to the first example that we looked at, notice how this section here produced this curve here because the water started off filling the narrow base and rising quite quickly. But as the section of the container grew wider, the height increased more slowly, which is why as we go along in time, the rate of increase in height tails off. So that's what curves are doing. We can see that there's a curve very much like that here. And that's later on during the filling of the container. So it must describe the upper part. And we've already seen what kind of shape is needed there, something like this. But first of all, we need to deal with the bottom of the container, which fills first. Now you can see here that this curve is going in the opposite direction. In other words, the filling starts off quite slowly and then speeds up. So you end up with a shape, something like that, very roughly drawn. Starting from the beginning, it begins filling up relatively slowly, then speeds up as it narrows. So that's what's going on here. And then from that same speed of fill, it starts to slow down as the water has to fill a wider and wider area, which is what's going on in this section here. You could draw this in other ways. So for example, you might have a container that looks something like this, for instance. But here are some things that you couldn't draw. So for example, a container like this would not work. Because if you had a container like this, there'd be a period of steady fill in the middle. So you'd have a graph that began by curving up, then carried on straight for a while, and then curved over like that, which is not what we have here. So this isn't right. A container like this would be the opposite. It would start off curving like that, then slowing down as it widens, and then it would speed up again in its gain of height as the container narrows towards the top. And last of all, perhaps obviously, if you add any fancy stuff at the top of the container, that would change the graph. So for example, something like this would produce a different result because filling this bit would also need to be reflected in the graph. So we're left with just the middle option as an acceptable answer. Short and simple, but I hope that's useful because it does come up from time to time and it isn't a particularly obvious question type and does take some thought. If it did make you think, please subscribe to this channel. You can unsubscribe at any time if you stop finding it useful. And don't forget to take a look at the free resources linked in the video description. I'll see you next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for my next live lesson. Bye bye.